The artifact NDA might have just been breached. Stay tuned for all of the potentially leaked information about deck building and a number of the most anticipated heroes. Hi folks, I'm Divok, and welcome to the Artificers Guild, the home of all things artifact. We make guides, discuss recent speculation, and cover crazy news such as we have today. In this video, we're going to go through the potentially leaked information about the deck builder. This all came from a couple of screenshots supposedly shared by Cyclops. What convinced him to do such a thing, I'll never know, but let's take a look what we have inside. And we have the deck builder! Alright, let's calm down for a minute. We're going to take this stage by stage, looking from the top left corner, moving down through to the bottom right. First of all, we have Sort. This button seems empty, maybe it could be some sort of toggle, it could be something that they implement at a later stage, but for now, this doesn't seem too important. Next up, we have Rarity, and this is a big one. There are going to be four rarities in Artifact. Four different colours, which might I say are really easy to see for someone who's colourblind, so thank you very much for that, Valve, to signify the different rarity levels of cards. Now, Valve have already stated that rarity does not necessarily mean power, but this is yet to be proven. It's nice to at least know what types of rarities we're going to be getting in Artifact. Next up we have Item. This likely allows you to display only one type of item in the main card panel. This of course varies from weapons, armour, health and consumables. These buttons are then repeated for Hero, there's also one for Main, which looks like it's going to be Spells, and lastly Colour, obviously allowing you to pick between red, blue, green or black. Finally, in this top filtering bar, we have a Search, which you can use for specific cards, and potentially for effects and things such as that. Moving along, we have three different tabs above another panel. The first tab is Build Deck, and seems to be the tab that we're on. There are five slots at the top, and a drag and drop section for adding cards into the deck itself. This shows some really nice sort of interactive card dragging and building, and something quite visceral, I guess. Something you can really get into while deck building. Doesn't make it quite as laborious as you find in other games. And I'm really looking forward to building my decks in here. I personally spend a lot of time constructing, theorising and building decks, so this is a big one for me. This is also where you name your deck, and there's some sort of error, there's about three of them on this current screenshot. If you want any sort of idea as to what these errors might be alluding to, please let me know in the comments below. So moving back a little bit to the top five slots. These seem to signify the hero spaces. It's already been confirmed that the first three heroes you put in your deck will come out as the first three heroes on the first turn. Then the fourth hero you put in your deck will spawn the turn after, and the fifth hero you put in your deck will be the turn after that. So this five sort of hero empty spaces at the top of this panel seem to be the way that you set this. You've got three slots on the far left, followed by a gap and another slot, and then a gap and a final slot. I can't seem to think of any other reason why they'd have this in the deck builder, so I'm going to go ahead and say this is where you set your hero order. The second tab is buy cards, and the third tab is sell cards. Will this let you buy and sell cards from within the deck builder? Possibly. If your perfect strategy just needs that one more cunning plan, can you quickly buy one from the marketplace? Artifact is one of the first big TCGs of this type, with a really really big and already well constructed market behind it in the Steam Marketplace. I've really been looking forward to see how Valve merge Artifact and the Marketplace together, and this seems to be one of potentially many ways that they do so. Next up, moving down a bit and going back to the left, we have the card preview pane. This shows card information. It's also got a different art style, so I'm not sure whether or not they're moving away from their old art style, or if this is just the art style you see in the deck builder to make things more clear and crisp. I am a fan of the old art style, so I'd be sad to see it go, but this art style is also pretty good. In this example, in the preview pane, the card we see is Pugna, a hero that we had previously not known much about and had only been confirmed in the copyright database recently. Pugna is a red hero with 6 attack, 0 armor, and 9 health. Pugna also has an ability, an active ability, called Nether Blast. This is the first active ability we've seen described, so we still don't know the exact mechanics as to how they work, whether or not you activate it, whether or not it activates by itself after a cooldown, or whether it triggers off a particular effect. Netherblast ability condemns a random enemy improvement and has a cooldown of 3 turns. So if we assume that you can activate it, you can then kill one random enemy improvement once every 3 turns. Which is crazy because there aren't that many improvements that we've seen in the game yet, and the ones that we have are very powerful. Of course, you are designating an entire hero in your deck just to getting rid of those improvements, but this is already a good show for Artifact. This one card immediately stops the meta from just evolving into some structure-based improvement deck, because once every three turns, that improvement's gone. 
In this painting, we also get to see a couple of other things. First of all, the little artifact logo seems to be related to its rarity. So we see Pugna here is gold rarity. Whether or not that means all heroes are going to be the most rare, we're not sure, but it would certainly make sense. Next, we see this owned one, which coincides with the times one from our next section, the card list panel. Running central to your screens is a long list of red, followed by some blue units. The times one, or in a couple of cases, times three, seems to be the number of cards that you own of this type. So obviously, times one being the heroes, because you'll only ever need one of each one. And the times three seems to be the other units, the creeps. Now, this times three wasn't exactly confirmed before. We had an idea because of the times three premier cards you could have in each deck, but this is the first time, I believe, that we've seen times three of units, i.e. creeps, be included as a maximum. Also, from this panel, we get to see some of the colours of heroes that we had not yet known. Obviously, we didn't know that Pugna was red yet, and we do now. So, Pugna, you're a red hero. This is going to bring an interesting dynamic to red, which currently, between Axe and Legion Commander and Bristleback, seem to be quite bruisery. Pugna has some pretty high stats, 6 attack and 9 health, pretty tanky and quite a lot of damage too. But Pugna as a hero, you might think doesn't quite fit. But I'm glad Pugna's in here. I'm glad that Red isn't just a bunch of beefy people with swords and axes and whatever it is Bristleback seems to be wielding. I'm glad they've put some magic in there too. Next up, we see Mazzy. Now Mazzy is also a Red hero. And Mazzy, I speculated in one of my previous videos that she might be a bruiser, or at least a keen with a bruisery type mech. Now her being included in Red, contrary to what I just said, means that she might well have that bruiser role which I am beyond excited for. Mazzy, I think, is going to be one of my favourite characters, just lore-wise and general feel-wise. Timbersaw, for example, is one of my favourite characters in terms of just the general way they act. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with Mazzy. Next up, a hero that we've had a lot of talk about recently is Kana. Kana is a blue hero. Now, if you've been paying attention to the hype and speculation this past couple of weeks, people have been pointing out to this comic that it looks like Kana might be a creep, there's a lot of similarities between the current artwork for Kana and the artwork for a particular Radiant Creep in this comic. I'll put links to it in the description below. Check it out for yourself. But, as we now know, Kana is a blue hero. Last but not least, everyone's favourite number of heroes, Meepo. Meepo is also confirmed as a blue hero, which is quite interesting because Meepo seems to be renowned for being able to do many things at once and Blue seems to have this affection with doing lots and lots of things. Crystal Maiden allows it, Zeus gets benefits from it, many of the cards are low cost, Cunning Plan, Frostbite for example. If Meepo's in here too and if his ability is in a similar vein, Blue are going to be spamming a lot of cards and it's going to be hard to keep up with them no matter what you are. After what feels like an eternity of no new information, we get an absolute explosion like this. So what intrigues you the most about the deck building aspect of Artifact? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Artificer underscore Guild, and like and subscribe if you fancy helping the channel out. Also, check out our other videos. Here is our most recent video, and a video we think you might enjoy. So take a look. I have been Divok of the Artificer's Guild, and we will see you next time.